welcome to another Mr. Beast Byte video and this one's a little bit different insofar as it's not an unboxing video although I am unboxing a video so I suppose it is to an extent um, and uh, we're looking at a C9 now this is a really uh, very tidy machine um, complete with all pretty much all its packing uh, original remote control as well uh, it has a servo problem I can't exactly remember what the issue is but we'll discover that um, I bought this from um, Rich and uh, basically I sent him a board down, I sent him the servo board down to, uh, for him to try to swap out and the problem was exactly the same when he swapped the board. So the first thing I need to do is actually swap that board back over. He sent me the original board uh, as well. So um, yeah, let's get unboxing. And let's open it up and uh, I've already taken a look at it but I haven't uh, haven't actually lifted it out so I'll be interested to see what it's like still got the original tray plastic tray uh, there would have been something that slid over that originally a card of some description no doubt um, so it's got the original RF lead as well uh, remote control which is pretty immaculate. I mean, that's lovely. And uh, that's great. An original polystyrene as well. And the machine itself indeed does look very nice. A um, couple of little marks there, but uh, yeah, well, uh, no doubt polish those out will do something with them. So uh, yeah, let's get it lifted out. So there we have it, it's all out. Um, I believe everything works on it apart from um, the servo issue. And I believe um, Rich has also sorted out the DC DC AC um, converter as well, which is great. So, but I will check it. Um, it also needs a mains plug put on it. So, no mains plug fuse check on this one, <laughs> which is so cool. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change that board back over to the original board and then we'll do some checks. So I've swapped the board over. There's uh, my old board, uh, which also has a modification fitted to the later one. Um, but they are interchangeable, so that's cool. Um, one thing that Rich did, and I also do, and you learn this the hard way, is when you're changing all the connectors on these, rather than pull out all the cables from the um, the cable management, just unclip it from underneath and um, just keep the cables actually in the cable management. It just makes it so much easier, so much tidier. Um, the first one or two that I did where I've changed boards or installed a board, um, I used to just take out all the cables from the cable management and leave the plastics in. And it it never goes together quite as nicely as if you just take the whole cable management. They just unclip. Um, I tend to push the bits of plastic together using um, oh, where is it? Using these. Just push them together, and then they just they just sort of pop out. So you can see that push them together and then they can drop drop through so uh, yeah bit of a top tip it does make life a lot easier so what I'm going to do now is I'm um, just going to put this just back in in place it's going to put one screw in uh, just to keep it keep it from flopping out when I turn it over and uh, we'll take the top off and see what it's doing so new mains plug with the correct fuse is now fitted and uh, you'll have to tell me if this works. I'm going to apply power to it. Ah, super. Okay, that's a good start. Uh, I'm guessing is that on dim? Yeah.
Okay, super. So, um, first impressions. Um, it's got the metal gears on the front loading system, which is always good. It's always encouraging. Belt could do with changing. Uh, I don't think it's quite the right belt, to be fair, but it's it's got wear there. Um, I'll also change these, clean these up. Um, the DC-DC AC power supply is um, the earlier type. Uh, apparently it has been repaired. Um, so, which has obviously had more luck with them than I have, because I've always found the early ones, the transformers are usually bad. Um, but this one, obviously, probably the caps were enough. And there's also a, a replacement backup battery, which looks as if it's been liberated from something, possibly, or it's just had something, maybe some foam on top of it, just to... Um, Just to stop it touching the top, I don't know. Um, we'll check that. And uh, yeah, I suppose we ought to put tape in it and see what it's doing. Uh, let's grab this tape. I'll just help if you turn it on. Okay, so what we actually have is the heads going super fast. So, yeah, I don't know why I thought it was capstan, but uh, yeah, the capstan, let's look at the movement of the spool there looks fine it's just the heads that are literally running away so uh yeah let's have a look at that so i am wondering on this hall effect device it's um incredibly glued up and quite frankly looks awful <laughs> so uh i know that generally when the hall effect fails you get no drum rotation at all. But I'm just wondering if maybe it's just not sending feedback, it hasn't died, it's just not sending feedback properly, maybe? I don't know, can that happen with these? So anyway, I'm going to give it a, give it a good clean, I mean it needs a good clean anyway, and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so I've uh, given it a pretty good clean, uh, certainly a heck of a lot better than it was, but it was really difficult to get that glue off. Um, I used um, cotton wool bud and uh, a toothbrush as well, uh, just to really get the glue out. So that was quite some effort, but let's see if we do have more success now. No. So you've still got super fast heads. Um, right, so what I might do is, as we are pretty confident that this board is okay, uh, because it had the other board in, which is a known good board and it was doing exactly the same thing, I am going to actually drive an external set of heads. I think it is just literally uh, this connector here. Uh, but I might have to have a look at the circuit diagram because I have a feeling, no, it's a bit more than that. It's this connector here goes here and no maybe that is it now those are the those are to the head amp board on the top and there's this brown one here 
which I thought was the was for the for the motor. I'm gonna have to. I'll, I'll look it up. <laughs> I'll look it up. I've forgotten. Um, but I think that's actually just all there is for the motor. Just that one. That she does power, and then the um, FG signal, the the signal back. And of course, it's grounded anyway. So yeah, um, I think I might try that. So what I've done, uh, just to really eliminate the motor or find out if it is the motor, I've plugged in a motor from a scrap deck. Uh, it actually has no heads on it, bad heads, so long since gone. And uh, yeah, let's give it a go. So as you can see, that is running way too fast on that motor as well. So, uh, yeah, that sort of proves that uh, we have got another problem. Probably isn't servo. It's probably more to do with the signal board. Um, the servo circuitry also derives part of its um, synchronizing signal from the uh, video signal side of things. So I need to check that. Look for that. I think it's from the 4.43 uh, uh, clock that it sort of derives one of its synchronizing or one of its servo um, uh, synchronizing pulses from. So, but yeah, to test the heads, it's just literally that connector there. So you just take that off, put another one on, and you can check the motor if you've got one spare, like I have. So yeah, I will uh, crack on. Okay, so I did miss something um, and I found this out by uh, a process of elimination through the, uh, the service manual. Now, I didn't up until recently have schematics. I had a manual, service manual, but it didn't include any schematics. And it seems to be really hard to find any with uh, schematics. Until, of course, I bought this. I've, I've featured this in a previous video, the Granada TV rental video service manual. So I was looking through it and Looking at the, um, the servo side of it, the head servo, you can see here speed control, and uh, that's all off IC302, which is this orange encapsulated device here, which I thought, oh no, here we go. But in the back of my mind, I've always thought that because the board was swapped and it was still giving the same results, it can't be the board. Um, it would be very unusual to have two boards um, with the same fault, especially as I know the board that I sent to Rich was was good. It was from a good machine. So, yeah, spares machine. So uh, I was sort of just pouring my way through this and let's go over to here. And where are we? So I was looking, looking at the circuit diagram and then I saw this and you can see here, PGA, PGB, so that's head switching, and PGS, speed, speed control. Now, I tested the motor, but I only tested the motor. So I swapped this connector, or this connector, for this connector, for the, the head drum motor. What I didn't do is also swap over this connector, which is connector, um, 301 on a red plug down there. Now, obviously, I'm not going to get head switching because there's no heads on this. Um, and there are two magnets on the head disc itself that um, tell the machine when to, to sort of switch heads for the head switching uh, so you get your proper picture. But it does still have the PGS signal. So now, if I press play, perfect speed. So that is proving that uh, we do actually have a faulty head motor. 
So the next thing is to swap the electronics off the, the uh, head motor here with the electronics from the scrap unit. And um, like I say, this hasn't got any heads on it. The heads were bad. Uh, lower drum's fairly worn as well. So I want to keep the rest of um, this, uh, the actual drum itself, as it is, and just change the motor components. So uh, that's what we'll do next. But yeah, really pleased with that. Okay, so that wasn't easy. <laughs> the uh, nut that held the uh, the magnet um, assembly on the bottom was so tight. Even when I used a spanner, it was so tight. And then trying to get this off, um, it was again so tight on onto the shaft. I mean, it was amazing actually how tight that was. But I've done it. Um, I did wreck the top bit, but I don't really care about that because that's not the problem. Uh, well, I hope it's not the problem. But uh, yeah, because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to swap over just the electronics. Um, so... Yeah, so I'll probably just desold all of this and swap it over because I, I know the Hall Effect, well, I'm guessing the Hall Effect's okay. I mean, the Hall Effect's all right on this one, but that one's clean now, so... Yeah, I must have could, could have changed the whole thing. The only thing is that I had to really push to get this off, um, to get the, the magnet off. So I've wrecked this, and I did actually catch. I don't think I've compromised it, but of course, ever so slightly the coil. So I'd rather not use this um, now, uh, just for the sake of reliability and the fact that that one's probably going to be good. I mean, it's going to be fun trying, isn't it? So, uh, yeah. But um, just thinking about that connector, the red connector 301. Um, of course, I mean, it's a three-head machine. And you can see there the, the magnets, uh, or the pickups, rather, for the, the magnets. So one there, and then two here, which would be PGA, PG, so PGA, maybe that one, PGB, maybe that one. PGS is that one? So I don't know, but what I don't understand is why that needs to be connected to make it run at the right speed, even though there's no head disc on here. It, it's running at roughly the right speed um, without there being any heads on there, so it's not like it's getting any feedback. I just wonder if it needs to know that the coils are connected. Um, so, yeah, that's an interesting one. I'm guessing that's probably what it is. It just needs to know they're connected, even if it's not getting a signal back. Uh, they need to be connected for the uh, for the feedback to work from the um, the actual hall sensor on the the motor itself, motor electronics. Yeah, maybe you could let me know in the comments on that one. But uh, interesting. So I prepared the top of the drum now. Uh, ready to remove the whole lot to uh, swap the motor. Um, I've unplugged from the uh, head amp assembly, that's the bit that folds here. And I've done it the way I do it these days is to actually take the cans off and keep the tape intact. Um, I don't know, I just like to try and keep things original if I can. So uh, that's all done on the top. Uh, obviously, taken off the um, guide assembly as well so uh, it's all work from the bottom now and uh, drop the heads out. Also worth noting that on the other side of the deck there is actually a black um, metal clip that you need to just release to get this sort of one of these clips just to so you can pull this through and then you've got a, a little cable tie here to release. Uh, on this side of things it gets a little bit more involved because the brown wire through that runs through here also runs through all of this loom so you're gonna to have to cut all of these which is a bit of a shame because it does sort of muck up the um, muck up the 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 sort of loom a bit so I'm trying to keep that as as together as possible but uh, like I say once you start disturbing this loom it never seems to go back quite the same way but uh, yeah so we'll do that uh, another couple of black um, sort of metal cable clips to undo 
And this one goes to here, which is the direct for the motor itself. It goes here. And uh, yes, yeah, so I get that all untangled and uh, we can drop the whole drum down. Let's change the uh, circuit board. Um, also put on a new um, hall effect, I thought might as well while I'm in there. And um, put it all back together. Um, what's worth noting is you don't have to undo every single, uh, un cut out every single clip. There's only a couple of clips that you need to actually free off. And this one here. So it does actually keep it quite tidy still, so well done Sony on that. Um, but as you can see, I've started taking it apart again because the headmost is doing exactly the same thing. Now, this is where you get the two different types of tech. Uh, the ones that always go by the book, always get the scope out, whatever. And the ones that just go, oh yeah, I've seen that before, or oh yes, pennies dropped, I know what it is. I'm more the latter, <laughs> and I paid the price for that insofar as if I'd scoped this, if I'd scoped what was coming through this connector here and subsequent electronics, I probably would have worked out that it's something to do with this, this side of the electronics, which is the uh, the three um, uh, magnetic pickups um, that basically go back to that. And it looks like there's going to be something wrong with one of those pickups. Uh, which is going to be an interesting one. Um, I'm going to have two other uh, head assemblies, but I'm sort of loath to try these or to swap them because these have more wear on them. The the lower drum in this is almost brand new. It's perfect. But if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. To actually change the these is not easy from what I can see. Um, it means having to take out the the centre shaft, which I don't fancy doing. Invariably, I'm going to damage the bearings if I try and push that out. Um, so I'm not really inclined to do that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you never know. It could be a bad solder joint, maybe. <laughs> uh, you can live, live and hope, can't you? But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to take this apart again, drop it out, and uh, strip this back down. Uh, I'll probably undo that nut before I take it off, actually. And um, we'll see what I find. So, uh, testing the sensor coils for the um, magnetic pickups. This one. So this is the bad unit. 278, 279 ohms on that one. Three hundred odd on that one, which is fine. And this one, nothing. That is completely open. So if we compare this to another drum, that one is fine. Let's test that one. Three hundred odd. Two nine five, two nine three, thereabouts. And uh, just wondering. Yeah, they're fairly variable, aren't they? This one is definitely open circuit. Uh, what I might do is just reflow the solder on this one, just in case. Um, but I'm sure that has gone. And is bad. So, um, looking at this, I know I said that the lower drum was actually uh, was really good, but actually it's not that that wonderful. And um, comparing it to this one, this one's actually not bad at all. It's a few scratches on it, but we can take those out. So what I'm thinking is I'll use this, change the heads, change the upper drum, just basically make make a good unit out of um, 
as of the whole assembly using that lower drum and uh, we should be good to go. Uh, I do have another lower drum as well but this one is actually quite worn. You can see there's a wear mark at the bottom there um, so I'm not so keen to use that one but uh, yeah this one this one isn't quite as good as I thought it would be. I don't know quite what I was thinking um, because I can actually see the top of the, uh, the pickup actually poking through there. So yeah, but I reflowed the solder anyway, just for the hell of it and uh, no difference of course. So yeah, time to do some swapping over. So it's all back together. Uh, I bothered too much have I? No I haven't um, <laughs> bothered too much with the um, putting the cable ties back on yet because well as soon as I do that I probably need to take it apart again but um, yeah as you can see I've, I've not got any heads on it let's power it up um, I've put my blank blank cassette in so no tape uh, which does mean that it will still cut out uh, sort of detect that the spools aren't running as they should, but we should get a, an idea if the heads are actually running the right speed. So, uh, oh, let's play. There we go. And you can hear that's now running at the right speed. So it was that uh, sensor coil, it, it was open circuit, which is absolutely bizarre. I find that so weird uh, that it's gone open circuit. But I suppose at the end of the day, I mean, these machines are getting old. Um, and uh, yeah, anything goes, I suppose. I mean, I, I wonder if it's um, a similar sort of thing to what the um, DC DC AC um, units are suffering with, where it's just literally the acid of the 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 flux or the solder um, uh, ingredients are just eating away at the 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 cable in there, the the copper. But uh, yeah, really odd. So, as is always the way, I'm out of these clear ones now, uh, the white uh, cable ties. So I've had to use these finer, um, finer black ones, uh, but they'll be fine. They'll do the job all nicely back together and uh, are fed through the uh, head amp uh, cables as well. So I suppose the next thing is just gently push that down, to be a bit careful. Uh, put a screw in and uh, time to do the heads.
Okay, so um, I've just uh, resurfaced the upper drum as well. It was pretty good. It was scratched there, actually. That's interesting. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's um, all good to go. Uh, heads are on. Um, you will notice that I was struggling a little bit with the um, Allen screws. Um, my 2mm Allen key is stripped. Um, unfortunately, it was a rather cheap Allen, um, Allen key set that I bought. <laughs> and um, as a result of trying to get these undone, because these can be really tight sometimes. Um, the, uh, I'm just going to just tidy that up. The, um, I had to use a, an Imperial, an Imperial, um, Allen key, which is not ideal, but it, it, it was enough. I was thinking, oh, I'm just going to have to abort this. Uh, postpone it for now and uh, get get the correct Allen key, but I, I got away with it, so that's fine. Um, and the the actual um, screws, the Allen screws, are really very tough, much tougher than the actual tool that's used to remove remove them. So I will get some more, but uh, yeah, we've done it. Uh, you also notice that I used tweezers, even though in putting that one on, I just used my fingernail. But uh, yeah, I use tweezers and very good reason for that. It does actually help stop damage, uh, any damage to the uh, to the, the actual outers of the, the cables. Uh... Oh. I've fitted the blinking wrong. Oh no. <laughs> I fitted a C30 um, drum instead of a... Well, that's fine. That doesn't matter. Um, so, we're upgrading this machine <laughs> to, to a C30. Um, drum. <laughs> I don't see any problem with doing that. Um, it's just, oh, honestly, uh, yeah, um, I need to go to bed earlier. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is crazy. So I fitted a C30 style um, lower drum unit, uh, which means basically that I don't get the screw holes to mount the, um, the, the upper drum in or on to and uh yeah so as a result this is totally pointless um now what i can do is i can take these screws off and put on um the two screws that the laser drums have i can do that uh, i can put a c30 drum um upper drum uh on there which would be probably not a bad idea to be fair because i've got some good ones and uh, we should be all good to go, but oh, come back. <laughs> why didn't I notice that? Honestly, uh, so I have a good resurfaced one here. What is nice to do with these and um, can save an awful lot of trouble um, further down the, the, the line is making sure that you keep the low and the upper drum matched because the wear is more even and that does sort of make sure that your tracking is going to be good, the alignment of the deck is good. So by me doing this, potentially I, I run the risk of having alignment issues, which I should be able to adjust out. They, they shouldn't be too bad, but it's something to bear in mind that if you do something like this and you take it all apart and you use parts from other machines and mix and match, you probably will get alignment issues. So, well, we'll see. We'll see how we go. Um, can't believe I missed that. But anyway, it's 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 all good. This means we have a later drum. And um, 
Uh, do we have anning keys to suit? Yes, we do. And we have the good ones, which is good. Actually, the, for the common sizes used on these decks, I actually went out and bought... Oh gosh, that's not what I wanted to do. I actually went out and bought um, really good quality um, Anon, Anon keys. Um, I think these are from Germany. Now, I seem to remember some C30s actually did have, um, sorry, C9s did actually have this later drum or at least it was it was offered as a replacement item with the later setup so that's great that is done let's put, put the cable management over which i think goes something like that and then so we'll get this. Connect it up. Oh. Honestly, you can't get the staff, can you? This seems tighter, so I wonder if I've actually um, threaded the loom. Maybe a little bit less sympathetically this time, but anyway, it, it'll be fine, I think. We'll find out, no doubt. And it goes in there, and there. A little bit off shot, sorry. So it's still got the original belt on there, but that's fine. It's enough to test it. Um, so I think we are somewhere good to go. The deck itself is actually really, really clean. And it certainly hasn't seen a huge amount of use. Um, I wonder how soon after it uh, was made it actually went faulty. But uh, yeah, so uh, let's give it a test. Okay, so here goes. Uh, the tape, turn it on. <laughs> I'm just going to wind this tape on a little bit. It's a little bit rough, this tape, I have to say. But it is working. Um, now I should potentially have a picture. So... We are working, um, we've got head servo running properly, which is great. Um, and the later uh, lower drum assembly is fine. It is from a C9, so it was completely 100% compatible. I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest. Um, but uh, yeah, and the still is absolutely stunning. Um, it's really just so good uh, but we do have a problem and it looks like the heads are pretty much shot which is a bit devastating after all that <laughs> it's just really oh, so frustrating um, I have given them a clean um, I've checked the chips as well just to make sure they're okay and uh, they are it looks like one of the head chips is potentially bad. Uh, so, yes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, stop this video now. And uh, we'll delve into the um, electronics, testing the heads. Um, just trying to see what's wrong with them. What I might do is do it as a part two, or I might do it as um, part of an updates video that I'm working on. Um, I've had one or two issues with one or two other machines that I've been working on, and uh, I have 
detailed those. It's one of those things with these old machines. You sort of use them for 20, 40 hours, a uh, few months, whatever, and they start playing up. So I'm, I'm detailing some of those issues as well. So it may well be that I'll just put that in, in that video instead. But we have success insofar as we can play a tape. Um, and like I say, I mean, everything checks okay um, as far as the actual machine goes. The sound is really good as well. Um, and like I say, this deck has not seen a huge amount of use, but I do have a head issue. So, uh, yeah, we will take it from there. Um, so, thank you very much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe as well. Really means a lot to me. And um, also comment. It's I, I love reading your comments. It's really cool to get them. And uh, I do read the, through them all, even though sometimes uh, it can take me a while to do so. Uh, what with everything. But uh, yeah. So with that, thank you very much for watching. And see you in another video. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.